Hi, it's Thursday, September 25th. Lots to talk about here. We have Invest 94L moving over Hispaniola and newly formed Tropical Storm Humberto, which formed right after yesterday's video went out. These two systems are going to be moving kind of in tandem into the southwestern Atlantic and will likely interact with each other and potentially cause impacts to multiple land areas in this part of the world. We're going to start with Humberto because this is kind of the easy storm of the two. So this is a quick hit. Here's the zoom in visible loop showing a better defined convective structure and inner core developing compared to what we had yesterday with a fully exposed low level circulation. It's likely still a little tilted with height. You'll see these milky white cirrus streaming in from the western side of your screen and there's a little bit of exposed low level cloud lines on this side. A lot of the convection is weighted toward the east. So this is likely a slightly tilted vortex with height, but you do see a dimple here in visible imagery and some upstream or up sheer convective bursts indicating a well-defined inner core structure, at least in the mid-levels. This was a microwave pass from Amzer 2 just a little while ago, showing even a mid-level eye structure beginning to show up here, but the low-level center is offset slightly to the west of that based on this image, and so there is a little bit of tilt east-northeastward with height likely based on this data here. And again, that's because of an upper-level trough to the northwest of the storm. Here's Humberto right there. You'll see uh, Cirrus coming down from the northeast over here, and then the westerlies we showed you before. So there's an upper-level trough axis in here. You can see that paired with some dark gray dryness in there. So this upper-level trough is imparting some westerly shear, and that will persist through today and Friday. And then as the storm moves more or less underneath of this trough, the trough will continue to weaken and stretch out and models agree that vertical shear will relax beginning on about Saturday, and once Humberto gets underneath and the trough erodes, uh, it will likely find more favorable conditions for intensification. So this is likely to stay on a gradual pace of strengthening for the short term, but as we get deeper into the weekend and early next week, this will likely become a hurricane and possibly even a major hurricane given the warm water and generally favorable conditions once it gets past this zone of shear. This is the European Ensemble mean briefly showing that. Here's the upper level wind flow showing that trough right in here. And as the storm moves towards the west northwest, it eventually gets underneath and you see the whole trough begins to disintegrate and there isn't much of one by the time we get to Saturday morning. And you can see that there's a generally quiescent environment aloft. The only remaining uh, possible source of shear is if 94L ends up developing strongly enough to generate a strong outflow channel that comes back down out of the north, there could be another source of shear due to Humberto's proximity to the other storm that will develop to its west. It's a little too early to tell with that one given the uncertainty with 94, which we're about to talk about. And you can see there's also a deep layer ridge here showing up in the upper level wind field. This extends all the way down to the surface. This is the Bermuda High. This is what's going to usher Humberto towards the west-northwest and then towards the northwest and north around the western periphery of this ridge. So you can see that on the, on the model here, you see that turn. And this has been pretty consistent across models for the last few days. And thus the NHC forecast track shows that turn here, slow movement to start and then a gradual turn to the northwest and north by the end of the forecast, which terminates next Tuesday in five days. You can see Bermuda's right here, so there's a nice comfortable margin to the west of Bermuda right now. That's a good sign for the island, but things could change due to the interaction of Humberto with 94L moving into the Bahamas around that time, which is introducing some complications for both storms, but the track for Humberto seems a little bit more robust and higher confidence than for the other system at this time. Speaking of the other system, here is 94L. So this is Hispaniola in the middle of your screen here. There's Puerto Rico. There's been heavy rains and flooding, and that remains the primary concern with this. We don't have a defined circulation or storm-like structure. We simply have a wave. You'll see there's strong easterlies over the Turks and Caicos and southeastern Bahamas to the north of Hispaniola, and then lighter flow close to the coast. Much of the vorticity associated with the low-level wave axis is concentrated near the northern Hispaniola coastline. The mid-level wave axis is centered off to the east because there's a little bit of westerly shear on the wave right now. So we have one of those low-level surface waves and then the mid-level wave tilted off towards the east. So this is pretty disjointed right now. Nothing well organized to be seen here. 
we look at the water vapor satellite loop, you'll see that the same upper level trough that we talked about shearing Humberto also has a little bit of a tail down towards the Turks and Caicos. So there's a little bit of westerly flow aloft causing that tilt in the wave axis. And this is likely to relax because as we talked about, this upper level trough will weaken and erode leaving this system in a lower shear environment similar to Humberto when it moves into the southeastern Bahamas over the next couple of days. So by the time it's in here, conditions will likely be broadly favorable for some kind of consolidation. The overall air mass is not deeply dry and the lowering of the shear and the warm water in the Bahamas should allow deep convection to develop and some consolidation of a surface circulation is expected by the majority of modeling right now. The big question with this one, though, is exactly where the circulation first develops. Here's the GFS low level wind flow valid tomorrow afternoon, Friday afternoon, Eastern time. There is 94. And one of the big things that's going to matter with this is how quickly does it move towards the northwest? This is going to play a huge role in its ultimate track and whether it threatens the southeastern US or not. And we've seen some trends in this in modeling since yesterday. And one of the noteworthy things about the GFS is it develops the system in the northeastern corner of the wave axis a little bit closer to this broader river of flow associated with this ridge. So you'll see this lane of flow that curves towards the north and then northeast. And the closer 94L is to this river, the faster it will move. If it's buried down here near Cuba, farther from the river, it's going to move more slowly. Now on the GFS, what happens is we get a burst of precipitation in the next 24 hours on the eastern side of the wave axis. So if we look at Friday morning eastern time, the surface wave is here, moving between Haiti and Cuba. However, the GFS has a lot of convection on the eastern side, closer to where the mid-level wave axis is, and this concentrates vorticity. So all of a sudden you get a new cyclogenesis going near the Turks and Caicos instead of closer to eastern Cuba. This shift to the east matters a lot because now the storm is able to move to the northwest more quickly and it just makes more progress than it would if it was farther down here. And I'll show you why this matters. If we look at the 500 millibar mid-level steering flow, for Saturday afternoon. Here's 94L or what would be developing into the next storm named Imelda by this time. And there's Humberto to the east. Here's the big steering ridge over Bermuda centered right there, directing Humberto towards the west northwest and also helping to usher 94L towards the northwest. In combination with this upper level trough over the southeastern US, you can see that here. And this is a major feature. Models expect this to try to pull out towards the northeast. Uh, but possibly weaken and stretch out as it does so. So as we go forward, you'll see a piece of this trough gets left behind over the southern Appalachians, and Imelda, or what would be Imelda at this time, is moving north of the Bahamas a little bit more quickly on this particular model run. You can see it's at a higher latitude than Humberto. And this matters a lot because we really have a three-body problem here. We have the upper level low over the Appalachians and the two storms. And they're all going to influence each other to some extent. We talked about yesterday how these two storms are close enough to influence each other's track. They have an influence on each other that is kind of orbital in nature. So Humberto is uh, causing a steering influence like this on Imelda. And Imelda is causing a steering influence in the opposite direction on Humberto. And the question is, when will they get close enough for this influence to be significant enough to alter their respective tracks? Now, in this case, on this model run, Imelda develops in a way that gets it to the north more quickly, and thus the influence of this upper level trough over the Appalachians dominates, and Humberto doesn't have much say in where Imelda goes. So on this model run, uh, the track ends up bending up towards the Carolinas because of this upper level trough nearby, and the storm ends up going inland over the southeastern US. Now this is a change from the last several runs over the last couple of days. If I go back to Sunday evening Eastern time and I show you the last few model runs, you'll see what happened uh, yesterday at this time. We had Humberto here and future Imelda right there. If you look at the current run, you'll see that Imelda is just straight up faster to get towards the Northwest and Humberto is a little bit farther South. So we've seen a shift southward with Humberto and slower 
faster and more north for Imelda. This puts the storms a little farther apart and it reduces the likelihood that Humberto slows Imelda down before it gets towards the coastline. One thing you'll also notice is that the upper level trough over the Appalachians has come or trended farther southeast towards the coast on this most recent run. So all three of these factors, all three of these trends, at least in the GFS, have resulted in a stronger likelihood of Imelda simply racing toward the coastline before Humberto is able to influence the storm's track at that point. We've also seen a similar trend from the ECMWF. This is the 500 millibar forecast for Sunday evening on this model, and it's not quite as fast with 94L slash Imelda as the GFS, but it is faster than it used to be. So if I look at the model from the last couple of runs, you'll see that it was slower and Humberto was farther north. But if I look at the most recent run, uh, 94L is faster and Humberto is actually significantly farther south on the ECMWF now relative to yesterday. So again, similar trend here, the upper level trough over the Appalachians dominates the steering flow and this comes up around the western edge of the ridge and into the southeastern US on this model run as well before Humberto arrives to try to slow this down. And now this isn't a universal forecast and there's been a lot of chaotic shifting back and forth as we expect in a binary interaction scenario when we have really three, it's kind of a trinary, interaction, three different vorticity maxima interacting here that introduces some uncertainty and not all models agree just yet. Here's the ECMWF AIFS model. This shows 94L developing a little bit farther to the south. Remember the GFS develops it near the Turks and Caicos and tracks like this. The AI model is farther to the southwest and for that reason it's farther from this river of flow, moves more slowly, and gets to the north more slowly. So if I look at 0Z on Monday, so this would be Sunday evening, and I'll compare to the uh, ECMWF deterministic run. So on the Euro, here's where Imelda is, here's where Humberto is. If I compare to the AI model, you'll see it's farther to the south, more slow with getting to the north with 94L, and Humberto is farther to the north as well. So the AI model keeps the storms closer together. Imelda is a little slower and now Humberto is able to exert more influence trying to slow Imelda down before it can get to the southeast US coastline. This trough no longer dominates the steering and these two start to orbit each other a little bit and as a result Humberto starts to escape but pulls Imelda with it. So on this particular model run Imelda never gets ashore and ends up washing away towards the east in the broader westerlies after Humberto escapes out to sea. And so we do not get a landfall in the eastern US in a solution like that. So we still have some complex disagreement here. There's actually what we could probably term a bifurcation between the models that move Imelda more quickly and towards the southeast US, that's one branch, and then there's the slower group that ends up slowly turning out to sea, and we have that kind of fork there. We can visualize these uncertainties with ensemble systems. Here's an example from the European Ensemble from the 6E run today showing where 94L is beginning to develop in the Bahamas. There's Humberto there on Friday afternoon. And as we go forward, you're going to see two groupings of members or really just a spread here with a grouping that begins to move quickly to the northwest because it developed farther north and then a grouping to the south that lags behind because it's moving more slowly and it's farther from the river of steering flow. And you'll see how this spread evolves by Sunday evening. We have just a tremendous along track spread extending from Cuba all the way to the southeastern US simply because of how fast or slow 94L or Imelda is moving to the north. And again, we have Humberto behind this with some uncertainty as to how far north or south this storm will be and how far east or west it will be in terms of how fast it's getting close to the situation and influencing the track of the other storm. This uncertainty will take a little while to resolve and we might be dealing with it for some time. The bifurcation is also well visualized by the Google DeepMind AI Ensemble, which shows both storms here. Here's Humberto, well-defined track curving to the northwest and then eventually north and northeast, recurving west of Bermuda on this model. 
and then you can see 94L developing uh, south of the Bahamas and then moving towards the north. So you'll see this well-defined track to the east of Florida, but then you see a split with a group of fast members that move up closer to the southeastern U.S. and then a larger group of members that slowly turn towards the northeast. These are predominantly the slower moving storms that end up turning. And at the moment, the AI models think that the landfall scenario is less likely than the out to sea scenario for future Amelda. But we, again, don't have any guarantees here. We've seen some models like GFS and ECMWF shift towards a landfall scenario, other models staying offshore. We're not gonna know either way today and probably not tomorrow either, just given the nature of binary interaction between two storms causes a lot of complications and small deviations can lead to large changes in the ultimate future for both of these storms. This is something for people to pay attention to. You should definitely make sure your hurricane plan is in place and ready to activate just in case a storm comes your way. If you're in the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, southeastern U.S., this whole area should be prepared in case a storm really does form here and start moving toward land areas. And keep in mind that even up and down the eastern seaboard and in Bermuda, even if Humberto is not making landfall, it could cause uh, impacts to coastlines even at a distance due to swells, waves, high surf, and rip currents. So we'll keep an eye on both of these over the next few days. We'll be dealing with them throughout the weekend and into next week as they both move into the southwestern Atlantic. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.